Now let's talk about anatomical terminology. I suck at drawing, so I'm not going to draw a lot here. I'm going to give you some lists, some things to know. So we're going to start with the planes. Okay. Planes and associated terminology. First one is coronal plane or frontal plane. If you took that term before, it's going to sound an awful lot similar. Okay, not similar, practically the same. So terms that you need to know: ventral or anterior versus dorsal or posterior. Coronal plane or frontal plane, imagine that um, this plexiglass sheet cuts me like this, like in the movie Omen, I think it was in the Omen. Well, it did something bad to a priest there. So it cuts me like this and separates like my, my body splits in the front and back part. That's it. What I can ask you, must be able to relate different body parts based on that information. For instance, my chest is in front compared to my shoulder blades. Does that make sense? So chest is ventral to shoulder blades. Make sense? Your abdomen is ventral to your um, vertebral column. Your buttocks are dorsal to the genitalia. Does that make sense? So, what I can ask you, uh, eyes, no, it's bad. okay, eyes to the back head, and eyes are ventral to the back head, so you will have to choose one of the answers, clear? Uh, transverse. That um, chopped up gentleman in the corner is chopped up by multiple transverse planes. Okay, so transverse planes separate their two terms associated with it: superior versus inferior. Or this is used much more often, and I use superior and inferior like by far the most, but you need to know cranial and caudal. So cauda is the tail, crania is the head. So my chest is superior to my abdomen. Does that make sense? My neck is inferior or caudal to my head. So far we good? Awesome. Mid sagittal. Yes, formally it separates your body into dexter and sinister humps. Dexter is the right. Sinister is the left. Okay? Not asking those terms. Nada. Okay? The terminology associated with mid-sagittal, it's probably more confusing than any other. There are several concepts. First, medial versus lateral. So, what's the difference? If stuff is closer to the midline, it's medial. Your eyes are medial to your ears. Does that make sense? Your shoulders are lateral to your collarbones. Good? Second, just one word, intermediate, in between. Your nose is intermediate to your eyes. As you can see, 
the same relate the same organs can be characterized by different terms. You see what I'm saying? So I can say that my nose is medial to my eyes, and I can also say that it is intermediate to my eyes. Okay? Ipsi lateral versus contralateral. Same side, opposite sides. Very, very simple. Ipsi lateral versus contra lateral. So your arms are contralateral. Your legs are contralateral. Does it make sense? But for example, your your kidneys are contralateral, but your gallbladder and your liver are ipsilateral. They are on the same side, according you know, in relation to that. Uh, plane. Okay, so those are three planes. You have to be able to recognize the images. I do promise that every image you can see before the exam. So believe me, there will be no like obscure, taken from God knows where, images of human body. You know, like different planes. If you do your diligence and you walk through. With the study guide and notes, you know all that. Now, some other terms related to this stuff. Proximal versus distal. So, humans have four limbs. Head is not one of them. Two arms, two legs. Proximal means closer to the attachment, point of attachment. Distal means farther. So your elbow is proximal to your hand. But your foot is distal to your knee. Okay? Good? Clear? Oh, okay. We're going to use it exclusively for limbs. But proximal and distal can be used, and we're going to slowly introduce it later. Probably not even here, but more like in digest, especially in digestive system and somewhat in respiratory. I'm going to talk about long pipes. Okay. Proximal versus distal. Uh, superficial. versus deep. So closer to the surface, farther from the surface. Your cranium is superficial to your brain. Okay? Your heart is deep to the ribs. Meet Benjamin. This is Benjamin. This is Benjamin 2. That's Benjamin 1. The old Benjamins. Um, so the heart is deep to the ribs. Well, it should be a little bit higher. Okay. Like, this. like your skin is superficial to everything. Good? Clear? That gets all them. That stuff. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill some of that because next thing we're gonna talk about. Uh, body cavities and membranes. And then, if you're curious, we are going to have breaks, short breaks, but you will have time to run to the restroom. Like, not run, walk. So, uh, there are several body cavities. I, you will notice that I am a sucker, sucker for two things, flow charts and analogies. Love them both, okay? So this is an example of my flow chart um, addiction. Cavities. There is a ventral cavity 
and there's a dorsal cavity. Okay. Now within dorsal cavity, you have two subcavities. You have cranial that houses brain, and you have vertebral that houses spinal cord. Now, the ventral cavity can be further divided into abdominal pelvic and thoracic. So, abdominal pelvic cavity can be even further divided into abdominal, which houses a whole bunch of organs. Okay. Um, stomach, liver, spleen, kidneys, um, small and some large intestine. Pancreas gallbladder. I probably forgot something, but I I mean like yeah, adrenal glands they on top of kidneys. Yeah, no shit they there. Um Pelvic. So, urinary bladder, some, well, distal large intestine, some large intestine, uh, reproductive organs in its entirety. Okay, now, um, something that you absolutely should wonder about. Is he going to ask all of that? Not all of that. Look, I'm not going to. I'm not going to trick you. I'm here not to create hurdles. I'm here to help you get over the hurdles. So, basically, the exam is the way to see that you kind of do your work and have a general idea of how humans are built. So, if you try to convince me that your stomach is in your pleural cavity, we're not. We're not getting there, you know. Very, very simple stuff. Now, thoracic. Divided into four cavities. So we have two pleural cavities. Obviously, four lungs. We have pericardial for the heart, and we have mediastinal, uh, which houses a lot of small imp important stuff that we really don't care much, uh, like not on the exam, I promise, not any organ that's in the mediastinal cavity will be on the exam, but like part of your trachea goes through there, okay, thymus is there for instance, but it's not the only thing, okay? Does that make sense, this part? Good? Okay, awesome. Um, regions, abdominal pelvic regions and quadrants. Um, left upper, left lower, right upper, right lower. 
not a rocket science. Why we care? If you have a patient who complains about the pain, or there's a wound, something going on, your abdomen and pelvic region is huge, okay? So you want to partition it. So how you do it? Quadrants is good, but they, again, pretty large. So regions may be a little better. Um, the names, as ma many things in anatomy, makes not a lot of sense, okay? So in the center, kind of makes sense, you have umbilical. Umbilicus is your belly button. It is around your belly button. Now, a little bit, well, kind of logical, and this one is epigastric. So, like, above the stomach. Technically, it is kind of above the stomach because the stomach is kind of about here, okay? This one is hypogastric, which is not too much of a misnomer. Okay? So you think, okay, stomach is in the center, yeah, below it, so hypogastric. Now this six, you have right and you have left, okay? And they go like hypochondriac. So chondrus usually refers to um, cartilage, okay? There's plenty of cartilage, so hypochondriac regions will be right here. I mean, technically they are under some cartilage. Lumbar, right lumbar, left lumbar, um, they are at the level of your lumbar vertebrae. And these two may have couple of names can be inguinal or iliac. So inguinal because the region is inguinal region that is basically your groin is kind of close, sir. Uh, iliac because these parts here of the coxal bones, the hip bones, they called ileum. So they kind of in that area. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions? For questions, you don't have to wait till I ask. Okay, one of the best things that I can hear in the class really is what do you mean? Say it again, or I have no idea what you just said. So that means that you try to, like, if you understand everything, like, from the get-go, here it's fine, but when we get, like, in the nervous system, you should legitimately be like, what the hell is going on here, okay? Um, the membranes. <coughs> Uh, three types. You've got cutaneous, which is skin, which is superbly easy. Skin is the cutaneous membrane, period, done. There's no questions. Right, like, that's it. Mucous membranes. Everything that is not covered by skin exposed to outside. Uh, give me a run. Which body parts? I always do this. It's so, so much fun. Which body parts, organs are exposed to the outside world? The nose. Mm -hmm. Can you expand it? We'll get to ears. Nose, but can you expand it? Is it the only nose or all the way? Respiratory yeah, system, respiratory. the entire thing. Yeah, your lungs are inside, 
but the air is outside and it gets to the lungs and it's outside exposure. What else? Your eyes. Perfect. Remind me about ears. It's a little bit more complicated. Not too much. What else? Come on. Huh? Sure, but I'm surprised that you started from the back door. The entire <laughs> digestive system. Yeah. The entire if you think about it, your respiratory system is is a giant depression in your body. You have a sac. And digestive system is a hole that starts in the mouth and ends in, ends in the anus. Okay? The entire thing is covered with the mucous membrane. Okay? What else? Uh, let's do ears. With ears, it's slightly more complicated. So auditory canal, what are you supposed to get into the auditory canal? Which objects you can get in there? Anything bigger than the elbow. Have you heard about that saying by EMT, uh, the ear, nose, and throat? Mm -hmm. So basically it means don't stick anything in your auditory canal because you can damage your tympanic membrane there. Okay. Auditory canal, uh, skin, Past tympanic membrane, mucus. That makes some middle ear is mucus. What else? We've got digestive, we've got respiratory. Urinary. Huh? Urinary. A little part of it. The outside. Okay? The one because normally if you're not in if you're not doing any medical procedure, if you're not doing a urethroscopy, stuff doesn't get in it gets out. But uh, area around urethral orifice in males and females, it is exposed to the outside. There's one more. It's exposed to outside. Huh? Your system? That's skin. That's not... That, it, it is exposed, but no. Reproductive system. In males, the, ure the, the urethral orifice, basically the penis is the part of reproductive and renal system, right? But in females, you have vaginal orifice, and vagina is technically exposed to outside and covered in, in the mucus, uh, by the mucus membrane. And that's it. That makes sense? Now, the last one, which is fun, is a serous membrane and everything that not exposed to outside. Well, not, not everything, but a lot. Of it. So imagine a lung. I'm going to bring the gentleman here. So imagine a lung, more or less, in say right pleural cavity. Okay. So what does that mean? Is that just a, a cavity made of meat, okay? And inside of that cavity, just the balloon hangs in? Obviously, that, that shouldn't work. Because organs that are in the cavity, say your heart in the pericardial, they move. They kind of touch, but they still can move. And if they start rubbing against the walls, that doesn't sound too good, okay? So this, what I'm going to draw now is absolutely completely schematic okay this the black circle is the cavity okay the you know, violet whatever that color is is the organ, okay? So it's, remember, it's schematic. It's not that huge of a gap and stuff. They are covered. The organ is covered by the visceral membrane. The term visceral always refers to an organ. And the cavity is covered 
I told you I can't draw by the preadle. So for example, your heart, heart itself, the outer surface of the organ itself, is covered by visceral pericardium. That makes sense? And the pericardial cavity, the surface of the cavity, the inner surface of the cavity, is covered by the parietal pericardium. There is a gap between them, absolutely. Okay? And this gap is filled with the watery secretion. So to kind of complete the picture about, say, your heart, your heart is suspended in the liquid, essentially. So that watery secretion, it's not fully sort of floats your heart, but there's plenty of fluid around your heart in the pericardial cavity. Does that make sense to you? Same goes for lungs. The lung is covered by the visceral pleura, and this, the, the, the pleural cavity, the walls, by parietal pleura. The gap between, there's fluid. That makes sense? Well, obviously, mucous membranes produce mucus. You can put it here. Now, is mucus water? No, absolutely right. It's not because the goal of the mucus is not to free flow, but to collect the crap, the dust, the bugs, all that kind of stuff, you know? That makes sense? Good? Clear? Any questions? Oh, while, we, while we're at it. Interesting feature is that all these membranes, uh, the, the, the pleura, the pericardium, the peritoneum that covers some of your uh, abdominal organs, you can see they are continuous. So, yes, visceral and parietal is actually one structure. Does that make sense? There's an illustration with a fist being pushed into the, um, the balloon in the lecture notes. That kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like. That's the fist uh, and, 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 and the, 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 the serous membrane is the balloon. Questions? Go ahead. Is that what you mean when you say that they're like double layered? In, like in the lecture notes? Yes. So double Basi yes. So you have you have visceral layer and you have parietal layer. Yes. That 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 means that's double layer. Okay. Good? Very last thing, and then we can we get a chance to, to take a peek. Um, I'm going to put it here. Things to know. Meaning that I'm not talking about anatomical regions. In the study guide, and I apologize, but for the first week, for sure, you're all going to have the same name for me. Sorry. That's going to be named you. Okay. I'm, I'm going to memorize your names pretty soon, probably by next week. But um, in the study guides that I think you have it, right? The study guide. There is a picture of a dude front and back in anatomical position. And above that picture, there is a list of the anatomical regions. This list is your study guide. No surprises here. Ex yes. So that's, those are the regions you must know. I can ask any of those.
but only of those. For instance, picture and lecture notes may have more regions. The ones that are not on that list are not going to be on the exam. Good? Okay. Let's take five, seven minutes as much as it needs for us to go to the restroom and fill the bottles. <laughs>